Today's video is on percent. Uh, percent ratios and fractions definitely have a connection because they're all a part to whole relationship. Um, but specifically, a percent is a part to whole ratio where the whole is 100. Now, as we look at these different percent, 73%, 40%, 6%, and 35%, it's very easy to convert them to a fraction. You simply take the number of the percent and put it over 100. The tricky part is, however, that most of the time when dealing with fractions, we like to write them in lowest terms. So just like we did in our unit on equivalent fractions, we would simplify each of these fractions um, by reducing them by their, uh, by their greatest common factor. And so by dividing both of these terms by 20, you'd get 2 over 5. By dividing both of these by 2, you'd get 3 over 50. And by dividing both of these by 5, you'd get 7 over 20. So understand that when changing those percents into fractions, um, even though it's easy to change them into a fraction over 100, you would need to simplify them to make a correct answer. Uh, percents can easily be used um, in an array to show their, um, their, uh, what, what the fractions represent. And so you can see in these arrays, uh, the fraction 10% is shown by shading in 10 of the 100 squares in the array, and the fraction, or the percent 55% can be shown by shading in 55 of the squares. But think about this, obviously this is showing one tenth is shaded in, or 10 over 100 is shaded in. Also, you could think of it as 0.1 shaded in. All of these are equivalent. And the same thing over here, this would show 55 over 100, it would show 0.55, and it shows 55%. So, um, you know, it shows the fraction 1 out of 10, the fraction 10 out of 100, the percent 10%, the decimal 0.1 or 1 tenth, and it also shows the ratio of shaded to unsh or to shaded to total, which is again a part uh, a part to whole relationship. So to write these percents as fractions in lowest terms, first you would write 32 over 100, and then you would just divide by their greatest common factor, which in this case would be 4, and you'd get 8 over 25. And in this case, you would do 60 over 100, and divide by their greatest common factor, which would be 20 and you'd get 3 over 5. So it's very easy to change percents into decimals, I'm sorry, percents into fractions, and then simplify. Now there are several ways to change a fraction into a percent. One is you could use the equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. Most students prefer this method um, just because it's a, a little simpler and it, it's fewer steps. So just like you do with normal equivalent fractions, you find a, a number that you can use to multiply 4 by to get 100, and then you do the same thing with your numerator, 25 over 100 we know would represent 25%. The same thing could be done by dividing. You just simply divide your numerator by your denominator, and you get the decimal equivalent, also easy to convert. Now this only works if you've got a denominator of either 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, or 50, because those are the only factors of 100. So if you don't have one of those denominators, you're going to be required to follow this step. Okay, so just be aware that both of those methods will work. So to write these fractions as a percent, um, all of these are factors of 100. So we'll go ahead and use that method that most students prefer um, by changing to a denominator of 100. So here we would multiply both terms by 20. You get 20 over 100. Here we'd multiply both by 4. You get uh, 72 over 100. And here we'd multiply both by 5 and get 15 over 100. So 20 over 100 would be 20%. 72 over 100, 72%. And 15 over 100, 15%. Remember, the word percent means per 100. If you look at the root word cent, just like a penny is one cent, um, that's one hundredth of a dollar. Percent is uh, per 100. So if I have a, a variety of fractions and percents and I want to put them in order from least to greatest, a good strategy to use would be to change them to percents because percents are always comparing out of 100, so you don't need to worry about a common denominator. So in this case, um, just from standard procedures, I know 1 half is 50%. For here, we would multiply 5 times 20. 2 times 20 would be 40%. Here, 10 times 10 is 100, so 3 times 10 would be 30%. And here, 20 times 5 is 100, 
3 times 5 is 15 percent. So now I would know that this right here will be the smallest. So 3 over 20 will be the smallest. Then my next um, smallest will be 25 percent. Then my next smallest will be 30 percent or 3 tenths. My next smallest will be 40 percent or 2 fifths. Then I've got 50 percent, 1 half. 60 percent, 75 percent, and 90 percent. And so I've just put those numbers all in order from least to greatest by converting to percents. If I had chosen to change my percents into fractions, then I would have had a variety of different denominators. And uh, in order to compare fractions, you'd know you'd need the common denominator. So by changing to a percent, you always have that denominator of 100, making it easier to compare. That's one of the main reasons people use percent. 18% of the players on the team wear orange cleats. What fraction of the team wear, are, wears orange cleats? Recognize that this 18% doesn't mean 18 players. It means 18 out of 100 if there had been 100 players, which there are not. So to find this fraction, we're simply going to write it as 18 over 100 and then simplify. The greatest common factor of 18 and 100 uh, is 2. And so 9 out of 50 players um, are wearing orange cleats. So that's the, uh, the basic idea. And uh, I appreciate you guys sticking around till the end. I'm glad you now know a little bit more about percents and their ratios.